In this video, we're going to focus on creating a funnel chart here with a custom data label. So to do this, the first thing what we need to have is our border template, which you can find here on chartjs3.com getting started. This specific link here, once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. If you want to get the source code of this video and many others, check out my Patreon page. And of course, join the Discord channel for any questions. All these links are in the description box. So what we're going to do here first is using the funnel chart.js plugin. To get that, we need to go to chart.js.org, click on ecosystem. We're going to scroll down here and we're going to look for the chart types. And then we have here the funnel chart type. And here you have that and you can find some of the link. This is the specific link here. That's the one I'm going to use. So I'm just going to copy this and just put that in here. So that's the first thing. So once we did this, let's copy this, put that in there, cut out this. There we are. Save, refresh. We're not done yet, but we can now convert this into a funnel chart. So we're going to say here the type will be funnel, save, refresh. All right, that works. But what we want to do now is to change this. So we need to change the index axis to the Y. So we say index axis will be equal to y comma save there we are that looks much better but we need to do some adjustments so the first thing what i want to do here is these numbers so what i will do is just for the sake of it i'll make this funnel a more logical six and then we just put in three 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 and three so it will just narrow down the funnel like a proper funnel you can see here it copies the bar shape structure basically and we have here this border item and i would just put this on zero we can just maybe put that so it hides everything or it doesn't hide at all so we just uh what i can do is another trick i'm just going to copy here these border colors because i cannot do a border skip here i cannot or right now the funnel chart doesn't have any option to hide these or at least not that i know of so what i do is just change the color to a solid color now you don't notice the borders. All right, so now we have this here. What I would like to do is have a line here. So to do the line, what I'm going to do here is I need to have and make sure we have enough space here. I'm going to put in here the layout and add some padding. And say here layout in the options, padding, and then specifically padding. Uh, no, not like that, but left, 50 pixels. And of course you can do more depending on how large your labels are and right side 50 pixels probably only right side should be more than sufficient but i have it here and there but you could do it one side only it doesn't matter it's up to you but this is more than enough so now we can create a plugin so we're going to take plugins and then we can say here a side label or something like that it's going to copy this then we're going to say your constant site oh constant and then i just copy this again equals id of site label and then we say we will draw this after or well do we do it before data sets draw so what happens is we get first well that's a uh, chart arc and login options and then the reason i'm doing this is that when we have the line it will be behind this shape here that would be perfect so you will only see the line stick out here that's what we want so then what i'm going to do here is a object destructuring so it's a constant ctx and then i'm not sure what we need more well let's leave it for like that for now and say chart so once i did this we want to continue on so what we need here now is basically the starting point of the center all the way to this point here luckily we can get this information quickly by doing the following console log then we're going to say your chart dot get data set meta so we have this and then we're going to say index zero this is the built-in functionality and we're going to say here dot data save that refresh open up the console log and you can see here we are getting all this additional information here and you can see here this value here is basically this point here and that one is starting here from the copy this point like that and etc etc they're all same here however i just want to have a line going to this point and all these lines will just stick out to here 
that's what I'm going to do and that's the index zero so what I'm going to say here for index zero um, that is the you say dot x so that's the number one we need and then the next thing what I want to do is I want to be in the middle here or at least somewhere in here so that we have nicely from this line all the way to here and there etc all safe to do that we can go into one of those so you can see here the next you can see here the base the base is the center here is being calculated and I'm going to use that base as another item so I'm going to say copy this then I'm going to say here um, we can say here constant base equals let's see how we get there instead of x I need to have next so I'm going to say here next dot base and that will be equal to base this one I need to make sure it will be uh, same as well I guess we can just do here same so constant x will be equal to this so once we have this I'm going to do a for each loop where we have the y which define the height of every item so we can have a nice line so let's start to do that one here let's start to draw this line you say ctx that begin path to create a new shape but we have to make sure we save it first so ctx dot save to save all variables above and then we say we're going to create a shape independent of anything else and the shape is just a straight line so i'm going to say ctx dot uh, stroke style for the color of the line there will be black for now then i'm going to say ctx dot um, line width for the thickness of the line and let's make this 10 pixels nice and thick then we're going to say here ctx dot move to this is the starting point that will be basically the x or not even the x and y well it needs an x and y but it will get it on the base because that's the center so we're going to start from the center going to the right side so that's this one that's the starting point then here the y we didn't specify that yet but maybe we can just make one for now and later on we're going to do a for each loop so we say here y dot y and we just keep this like that then i'm going to say ctx dot line tool to draw the line and the line will be x and y which is now in this case exactly these two so once we did this we can start to go here and say ctx dot stroke to draw the lines save this refresh there we are we have this now nicely at the back as you can see here it covers it nicely beautiful so what i want to do now is i want to do a for each loop to loop through all of these items so what i'm going to do here i'm going to say here we can loop through all of these data by saying this dot for each loop there's a your data point and index function error expression then we can loop through this we cut out that put it in here but this one will be consistent but this one will be based on the value of the data point because the height changes so what i'm going to do here this will be based on the index and if i do this say refresh there you are now we have these lines what i want to do now is i want to extract the color of this put it in here so then what i can say here for this we can just basically use here the data so you can say um, data and background color or any other way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in here an object destructuring of data so we have the data here data and then we're going to say here border color that's what we want and so we're going to say here where are we there we are we go from the data dot data sets index zero or sorry not index zero yes that is index zero we only have one data set and we say here border color based on the index let's save that refresh there you are now we have that one although maybe it needs a slightly different color just for the sake of it to to show a slight difference but it's acceptable for now that looks quite nice now we want to add up the data so what we want to do in here is i want to have first of all a font so the ctx that font and we're going to say this will be a bold font and then we're going to say maybe 20 pixels then we say your font family will be sans serif so once we did this what i want to do next is the color i guess the color can be same here i just can copy this and then go and say instead of stroke i'm going to say you fill i want to fill up this font with the color that we have and once we did this we want to put in the text we're going to ctx.fill text 
And then here what we need is basically the label, the X and the Y coordinates. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this for now and later on we can fine tune that. And for the label, I want to grab the labels here. So what I'm going to do is from data.label and an index number. So I say data.labels index. Save, refresh. Now that works, but I want to push it a little bit more to the right side. So we're going to say here, maybe for this, plus six pixels, save, refresh. Looks more better. Now we push it down. To push it down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say ctx dot uh, text align center. Let's do that first because I didn't do this yet. So maybe we need to push it even more to the right. As you can see here, but I want to center it, especially if you have longer text that might maybe be more practical. All right, so we can just increase this here, maybe say 20 pixels, 25, I guess, or 26. All right, now I want to push it down. So I need to say here, ctx dot text base line. And then I'm going to say here, this will be um, the middle position. So it will be in the column of middle. Now it's nicely centered, center or uh, vertically centered and there. We are now we have all of these here that looks absolutely phenomenal. 